Welcome to Nugget 88 with Steve Groman. This is the third part of a three-part series on the Ice Age and the Mammoths. And here is part three. Hi, my name is Steve Groman, and I want to thank you for joining us for this lesson of a creation seminar. Today we're going to talk about the Ice Age. When we start from the truth of Scripture, we can understand the mechanism for any and everything that's out there. We can understand the, even for the mechanism for the ice age because the ice would have come in at the time of the flood because of these mechanisms that we're talking about. See, the problem is and the issue is the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven opening are going to give us the mechanism for an amazing amount of heat and energy and the problem for the evolutionist is they have no mechanism for it. They can say it all they want. We can say it all we want. But without a mechanism, it's just talk. And the point of it is, we have the mechanism, which once again, written thousands of years ago by people that were never in North America. And the issues and the, the, the points that they wrote about are evident even here in North America. So it's very, very powerful evidence of the truth of Scripture. So I've been to several places where uh, a hot boiling pots are, or hot pits, or, or geysers are. There are actually several places, but of course one of the most famous in this country, and well, I guess everywhere on earth, is Yellowstone. And it's a beautiful place, and, and the thing of it is, there are many, many examples just in that one region of scalding hot stuff that, that comes up. As a matter of fact, there have been even examples of bison just walking into these hot pools and they fall in and it just bakes the flesh right off of them. They're extremely hot. Same thing, volcanoes. What about volcanoes even in this country or all over this earth? Evidence of when the fountains of the great deep are breaking up. Evidence of incredible heat coming up from beneath the earth's crust. We are the ones with the mechanism that explains when and why and how and all of those understanding scripture. Just believing what the Bible says all along the way. These geysers often, when they go, and they're very predictable, by the way, which is another interesting thing, but, but when they go, they, they're 50, 60, 80, hundreds, a couple hundred, a few hundred feet in the air, sometimes these things. Not only just at Yellowstone, but all over this earth, you can find these things aren't just little bubbling pots. They have those also, but they shoot incredible amounts of steam straight up. There are still even volcanoes under the ocean, under the waters. Think of the heat under the waters. The fountains of the great deep breaking up is not just on dry land. It's also out in the oceans. It's everywhere all over. So although the evolutionary scientists say that there were about 50 ice ages that have occurred over the last two and a half million years, the Bible very clearly says that everything was made at the same time and everything, everything is since then. There is nothing prior to that. There is no way anything can be millions and millions of years. So the fact of the matter is there was only one ice age. It's evident we did have ice and we can give the explanation. We have the mechanism what, when, why, and how that ice age came in, if you want to call it an ice age, how and when that ice came in. It is merely a consequence of the flood. The worldview the person is looking through that is explaining it is what we're actually learning. And the fact of the matter is, thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. So whatever the Bible says is the truth of the issue. And we have the mechanism of the flood to explain the ice age. Thank you, Steve, for that lesson. And we do want to tell everyone to go visit our website, creationseminar.net. We have 12 wonderful lessons that cover all the topics of creation. The first is, why is this important? The second lesson, Bible or Billions. Third lesson, one of the most popular, Noah's Big Boat. Lesson four, after the flood. And lesson five, by far the most popular, misconceptions about space. Lesson six, an all-time favorite, all about dinosaurs. Lesson seven, words mean things. Lesson eight, maybe the most significant of all the 12 lessons, is Darwin's legacy. Lesson nine, rock solid proof. Lesson 10, the longest of them all, is living proof. Lesson 11, in six days. And lesson 12, questions and answers.